What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country, this is episode number 43 and we started today's episode here with a game against Levante in La Liga and so far this season we've had a very very successful one as things stand and a very good run of form of late as well, 2 wins on the trot and 10 unbeaten consecutive games so far right now so haven't lost a game since the Roma match last month of course which we ended up having to simulate due to the, uh, the annoyance of EA even though we did lose the game 2-0 anyway but still haven't lost that game since the game uh, against Roma so yeah very very awesome run of form and everything's been going really well here at El Sardinero and as you do uh, take on Levante for the first game of today's episode Oliver Torres who in the last episode got himself his second goal of the uh, well his, yeah, his, his stint here at Racing Santander uh, I did mention in that episode I am going to start playing him more centrally now I know that a lot of you are going to be saying well we've been asking for that in the comments for a long time now and I do want to point out as I have mentioned to some of you in the comments that as I uh, record a week in advance it's kind of hard to read all the comments and react to them straight away but I do know that a lot of you would have been saying you know you've got to play them centrally and I know that now I know that for good you know both from your advice and from me playing the game as well so like I said we always try and work together in my series and that's definitely one of them finding out Oliver Torres' best position but uh, still in the 32nd minute here we will go ahead and take the lead and guess who got the goal Oliver Torres just talking about the guy speaking of devil's ears must have been burning and he smashes that shot in as well Oliver Torres made Making it Racing Santander 1, Levante nil here, just past half an hour mark. Really, really good finish by the young man there. Buena Casa holds it up, rolls it into his path, and he's not going to miss that from just inside the area. So that's his third goal in La Liga for us, and that's now two in two games. Very nice finish, and it's Racing Santander 1, Levante nil. And just before half time, Levante come forward again here, the number 21 getting onto the ball, striking it from just inside the area, but it cannons off the bar, and eventually Marion Schwartz wins as a throw off of the Levante. Levante player so a really good chance for Levante to grab themselves an equalizing goal just before half time but thankfully for us he could only hit the woodwork but as Bellerine slides the ball through towards Ander Caper he takes it around his man down this right hand side really good turn away Ander Caper he's so quick and he's also got a really good finish on him as well because he also scored in the last game against Villarreal and he scores here as well so the two players that scored against Villarreal in the last game score here as well and the game getting his second goal of the season and a really nice finish as well tight angle but I thought I'm going to try and blast in at the near post in the end it goes above the goalkeeper and into the roof of the net so final score was Racing Santander to Levante nil a deserved win Levante did have a couple of chances here and there but for the most part we did play better and we did deserve the three points really nothing happened happened in the second half so that's why there was no highlights to show you so even so we got the win that's the most important thing and I'm very very pleased with that uh, following that we had a scout report and as you can see we continued the scouting on a lot of them as there's only one and two months for the majority of the ones that do look pretty decent I'm going to continue scouting them because when you do have a five star experience and judgment scout what you will tend to find is that at first you may find quite a few players who are really really good but then after two to three months they'll begin to look quite average so yeah they you go we'll continue scouting of course there is a chance that one of them might get poached to another club but so far in our scout reports that hasn't happened yet so I'm not going to be too bothered and even if it does happen I'm sure there's going to be others to pick through as well we've already signed three players this season to our academy in I think this is our fourth report of the season so yeah that's pretty decent isn't it but uh, regardless take on Tenerife here for the second of three games in today's episode in the Copa del Rey now of course last year we reached the semi-finals we got knocked out by Real Madrid which was really really frustrating I would like another run in the Copa del Rey again but of course with La Liga we're performing really well there the Europa League as well performing really well in that competition as we begin the Copa del Rey the tiredness of these players I mean I've mentioned it so many times you must get sick of it but I do need to reiterate the, the stamina problems with this team is just insane I've never managed a team that has this bad stamina you know like seriously as a group you know collectively this team is terrible for stamina but uh, we did take on Tenerife Oscar getting his first goal uh, first goal of the season there for I think his first start as well making it 1-0 so very pleased to see Oscar scoring of course because right now our strikers Mariano and uh, Buena Casa aren't in the best of form in terms of goal scoring so we do need to get a real good goal scorer for us and maybe Oscar as he scores his first goal of the season there could be a contender to start the next league game but as you can see here he's through again in the 51st minute unfortunately for us his finesse shot is the post but in the end it wouldn't have counted anyway because the offside flag went up so still Rousing Santander won Tenerife nil in this Copa del Rey tie the, uh, the team's being uh, separated even by that Oscar goal and uh, from the free kick here the ball gets, uh, gets uh, headed forward to Oscar Oscar rides the slide 
challenge here. Fake shots around his man, goes through one on one, and this time he won't be denied by the post or the offside flags. It's a totally fine goal, and Oscar makes it Racing Santander 2, Tenerife 0. So, of course, the Copa del Rey ties will be two legs. So, even though, as you will see after this goal, nothing really happens, we do go on to win it two goals to nil. I still will fancy our chances going to a Liga Adelante side, two goals to the good, even though we'll be away from home and we'll most likely play a lot of backup players. I still feel as though we should get a job done. So, I'd say we got one foot in the round of 16 in the Copa del Rey as we win this tie by two goals to nil. Oscar getting both goals. Very nice to see. And like I said, with uh, Buena Casa misfiring, with uh, Mariano not currently doing the, jobs, uh, doing the job right now when he gets the chance, maybe Oscar deserves a chance up top. Who knows? But uh, still, here is a use comment for report. Uh, a couple of those players looking a bit worse than the last use comment for report I showed you. But that's just how it is. You know, just like scout reports, sometimes your players in your youth academy will begin to look a little bit worse as the months go by. Uh, still, following that, we had a squad report here. And I just, I have no words for this, but still, Ruben Blanco hasn't grown a rating. And he's had 16 clean sheets in 20 games as we enter December. If this was real life and a goalkeeper at that age was in that form, you better believe that people would go be going onto his FUT head page and saying, oh my god, this guy deserves a winter upgrade. But instead, in the game, he hasn't grown by a single rating and not a single stat is growing either. It's, it's not even the fact his overall isn't growing, not a single stat is growing. 16 clean sheets in 20 games. That is basically unheard of. It's just, it doesn't make sense. And what really doesn't make sense is that our backup goalkeeper, Fernando Pacheco, who's only played uh, three games this year, He's gone up by three ratings. What is that? Like, seriously, how, how does that make sense? And as you can see by the lead table, we're in third place, 16, uh, 16 games even, nine wins, five draws and two defeats, only six goals conceded, which is always really nice, and 32 points accumulated. You know, it's it's just it's ludicrous. And as you can see by the Euro, uh, Europa League table as well, uh, four games in. If we beat Lille in the final game of today's episode, which you'll see in just a moment's time, then we will guarantee qualification. And a draw means that if we beat Nationale on the final day, then we will guarantee qualification. So we're in a very healthy position in both tables. But yeah, just it doesn't make sense because I do take the point, and I have read a lot of comments as well. I do take the point that if Ruben Blanco is a young goalkeeper as he is at just 21 years old, then the chances are he won't grow regardless of his form because young goalkeepers don't tend to grow very uh, fast because players, you know, goalkeepers don't tend to hit their best potential and hit their peak uh, until they're about, you know, in the, going into their late 20s, early 30s. And I do take that point that does happen for the majority of goalkeepers, but not every goalkeeper. Not every goalkeeper is the same. And when you have a goalkeeper that's in that great form, I don't care whether he's 21 years old or 16 years old, fresh out of the youth team. The fact of the matter is, he's going to get a good upgrade in real life. So why wouldn't he have the same sort or progression in the game it just it doesn't make sense to me and again we take on Lille for the final game of today's episode here the third and final game away in France and of course you did see the Europa League table just a moment's time there as I shut up about Ruben Blanco's development uh, you did see the Europa League group table there as you can see coming into this game if we won the game we would qualify for the knockout stages with a game to spare as we'd be four points clear of Lille however if we draw the game we'd still be in a very healthy position anyway because beating CD National the Portuguese side on the final group game of the season would also see us qualify and of course uh, Lille would still need to get a result against Roma so we felt very confident about our chances coming into this game and Ruben Blanco made a couple of really good early saves and another one here in the 30th minute so the guy he may not be growing but he's certainly putting in the performances and putting in work in these games he made three great saves in the first half an hour and in the 34th minute as he catches this uh, corner here he lobs the ball out quickly to Jose Pozo down his left hand side who chips the ball forward towards Sergio Buena Casa. Buena Casa has a great first touch gets himself inside he's not even looking at the ball then he smashes it with the left foot and I have to say our goalkeeper Ruben Blanco is in inspired form but Kenneth Vermeer well I think he should have saved the first shot in the Lille game uh, you know in the reverse fixture El Sardinero the free kick from Madran if you remember that from a mile out I think he should have saved that one he didn't Lille went on to lose the game and if they go on to lose the game through this well I think Vermeer is going to get himself dropped because quite frankly he's got to save that it's, it's at his near post the shot is basically right at him and it seems to cannon off his elbow or maybe even his forearm in off the inside of the the near post and it's Lille nil Racing Santander 1 so no surprise that the camera cuts to our goalkeeper there he started to move off and a string of fine saves made sure that we had the chance to take the lead from that moment and we did so Lille nil Racing Santander 1 Wayne Acasa's first goal since October so that's very good very happy about that and also in the 69th minute here is Lille weren't really pressuring us at all they got a man sent off and a penalty given to us as well so I didn't actually think it was a red card at first because the animation didn't show up 
um, whilst the referee was um, about to give his, uh, get his card out, he went to another player instead of the camera. But as you saw there, he did get himself sent off for this challenge on Ander Caper. Is it a penalty? Yes. Is it a red card? I'm not too sure. So I think we got a bit of a luck of the draw there. It is still a definite, red, uh, def definite penalty, no doubt about that, but maybe not a red card. Regardless, that was the situation. So Lille down to 10 men. And Ronnie Ariaguza, who's already scored one goal for us this year, the 17 year old, an excess Fabregas out of our academy, he scored from the penalty last time. He scores from the penalty here as well. And our number four has sent Racing Santander in to the Europa League knockout round. So the new captain for our team, the hopefully long serving captain, makes it Racing Santander to Leo Nils. The ball goes bang into the camera's lens there. We are two goals up against the French side. Vermeer dives the right way, but he can't save it. It's Leo Nils, Racing Santander to and we are going through to the Europa League knockout stages with a game to spare as well and in the 76th minute Oliver Torres should have made it 3-0 but my finishing was poor and it went wide of the post with his left foot there so still Lille, Lille Racing Santander too. The final aim for the game was keep Ruben Blanco a clean sheet. Unfortunately we couldn't do it because Mavuba scored an absolutely superb free kick with two minutes to go and you can see he was very pleased with it wasn't he with this celebration. Mavuba makes it 2-0 here, uh, sorry 2-1 even as Lille get themselves a consolation goal. A very nice free kick, and there's nothing Ruben Blanco could do about that. But got, the final score is Lille 1, Racing Santander 2. So in the end, it doesn't matter. We do go through to the Europa League knockout stages with a game to spare. Absolutely delighted about that. If you would have said we were going to do that before the, uh, the group started, I would have basically entertained the possibility, but never believed you. But that's the situation. We are through, and we are just delighted. But as always, guys, a big thank you for watching the video. I really do hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed today's episode, then please do leave a like, and I'll see you for the next episode of Club and Country very soon.